Hello, so I just wanted to show you how to make the HR diagram for your constellation in case you had any trouble with it in class. So let me go ahead and share my screen with you here. There we go. And now we are looking at the spreadsheet. And okay, let me just get myself set up here. All right, so this is what your HR diagram should look like if everything went right for you in setting up the graph, setting up the axes, and entering in the data for the different stars. So um, if, there, if your graph doesn't look like this, it could be that there's some points out of place. It's, it could be easy to um, accidentally enter the wrong numbers here, so you could double check those. Um, the other thing that could have gone wrong is maybe you didn't get your um, temperature axis or your luminosity axis set to the right scale. So I want to just show you how to make that diagram. So let's move that one down and I'll make a brand new one. Um, I deleted the group names, but you don't have to. In order to select your data, you can either select the whole column by clicking on column C and then dragging over toward column D. That'll select all the temperature and luminosity data. Um, you can only do that if you either hide by going to um, right clicking on your group name row and clicking hide row or by deleting that group name row. What I would recommend making your personal constellation diagram is for you to make a copy of your groups if uh, your graph is set up correctly and then to just change the data instead of having to go through and make the entire graph again. So that would be my suggestion. On the other hand, if your graph is not correctly oriented, then I'll show you how to do that here. So again, I deleted that group name column so that I could just click and drag from column C to column D. Now I'm gonna go to insert chart and it'll pop up at some point with a chart. And I do want it to be scatter chart type, so that's good. And let's start with the luminosity axis. We know that we want the luminosity axis to um, be a little larger. And specifically in the questionnaire, we want the luminosity axis to be logarithmic. And we also want it to have some specific minimum and maximum values. So I'm gonna copy those minimum and maximum values. Go to customize, vertical axis, and then I'm going to turn on log scale and I'm going to set my minimum value there. And let me go grab the maximum value just so I don't make a silly mistake. There's the maximum value there. My luminosity axis is now in factors of 10. Um, maybe you like it this way, but maybe you prefer scientific notation. To change it to scientific notation, go to number format and then go and select scientific. Now that will wrap up our vertical axis. If your vertical axis for some reason didn't have a title, then you go to chart and axis titles, select vertical axis title, and you could type it in right there. All right, next we're gonna focus on our horizontal axis. We can see right now that there's low temperature to the left and high temperature to the right, but that's backwards. So we want to, uh-oh. We want to, sorry, it looks like my Zoom is doing weird things. Okay, that's all right. Um, okay, we want to change the horizontal axis to also be logarithmic. So we open up horizontal axis, click log scale, and then it had a reverse axis order so that the hot stars are on the left. And now we wanted to enter in some minimum and maximum temperatures and we were instructed to go from 2400 as the minimum 2400 kelvin coolest m star and the hottest o type stars are maybe around 35000 so we'll go ahead and add those as our uh, boundaries Allow bounds to hide data. If you want all your data to show up, then you'll want to unclick that box. Okay. And I'm happy with the number format from source. 
So yeah, I think that's fine. We will just leave that as it was. Um, okay. I think that's everything for the horizontal axis. And now the title isn't particularly descriptive. It doesn't tell us what sort of chart that is. So I'm gonna go in and change that chart title to something more interesting. This is the HR diagram of stars in Hercules constellation. Okay, I'm happy with this. And so now this is how your graph should look if you only have those main asterism stars, but we can add more data. I dragged this calculated column down quite a ways so that I could add more data. And I already went and borrowed that data from you all. So let me go ahead and that's the data I want to include. And I will paste it in right here. And there's one kind of funny outlier that says it's way under 500 Kelvin. I don't think that's right. Much, much less than 500 Kelvin, huh? So I'm going to try to identify, oh, that's our very last value here. I think that data was entered incorrectly. OK, now we're looking good. We're in business. So now we can start to see a little bit more than we did in the previous diagram. So without all that data, we only had a few stars here. And you can use the HR Diagram Explorer, HR Diagram Explorer, to figure out what kind of stars those are. So if I do this and look back to my, oops, my spreadsheet, um, let's say that I wanna know what kind of star is this one. It has a temperature of somewhere between four and 6,000 Kelvin. So let's call it 4,500 Kelvin. Its luminosity is about one times 10 to the three. So that's 1,000. So if I look at my HR Diagram Explorer with a luminosity of about 1,000, 1,000, and a temperature of about 4,500. Then um, if I turn on luminosity classes, I can see that that particular star is a red giant star. Okay, so it's not a main sequence star, but I can guess, okay, if this, if this cluster of stars is all giant stars, then maybe this diagonal stretch of stars here are main sequence stars. So let's test that hypothesis. Here is a point that's about 10,000 Kelvin temperature here. And it's about one times 10 to the two, that's 100 um, sun's luminosity. And so if I put luminosity of 100 and the temperature was 10,000, then that star is indeed on the main sequence. All right, so this is a, so a little bit larger than a typical main sequence star, but it is within the sort of bound of that particular luminosity class V. All right, so we'll go ahead and add all the rest of the data and just notice if our hypothesis is the main sequence runs right here and that the stars just above are giant stars. So when we paste in our data, Get rid of our little outlier again. Then now we see many more stars have been added to our main sequence and we have a clump of giant stars. But when we look at the HR Diagram Explorer, we have our giant stars, cool. We have our main sequence, yes. But what about the right white dwarf stars and the red dwarf stars that are at fairly low luminosities? It kind of looks like we're just seeing this part of the diagram and not seeing anything down in this luminosity range. And that's for a very simple reason. Those low luminosity stars are just not very visible to us here on Earth. They might be very far away, and therefore they are so dim that they are not detected by Hipparchos. So you have to have a lot more stars in order to see the very, very, very dim stars. The bright stars are overrepresented in our sample so far. Okay, so what do we do if we want a lot, lot more data? Well, if we go back to our search tool 
um, I'm going to delete any particular identifier that I was looking for before. And then if I go and find the box for B minus V, the color index, and type in exclamation equals, and then I scroll down to luminosity class and do the same thing. And then I find this box CST and type in a constellation code for Hercules, H-E-R. Then I'm going to click submit. And I will be shown the data for many, many stars in Hercules. I can change how many stars I want. I could get it basically as many stars as the database has. Let's say a thousand is probably enough. So I'll go ahead and show that. Now, look, there's more stars than I could possibly type in by hand. So I'm going to do work smarter, not harder. And I'm going to copy and paste as much data as I can. Even I have a patience limit though, so I'll stop right here. And then if I start a new tab in my spreadsheet, I can paste that in. It'll take a second, there it is. And now I only really care about my B minus V to calculate the temperature and my luminosity. So I'm gonna copy that whole column and drop it in here. Well, I don't really want the whole column. Uh, that came from here. I'll go like this. If I select that cell, I can copy the whole column and put those luminosities. Then I need to update B minus V with the matching data that would be here. Matching data, there it is. And my, my um, plot, my range for my plot probably doesn't go as far down now as my data does. So this went to, you know, more than 400. So I'd need to make sure that I actually have all of that data in the range. All right, how many data points are here now? Let me make sure that I'm not hiding any data. Allow bounds to hide data is unchecked. Oh, I see. Um, my trouble is that my temperature equation stopped here. So if I go and click the last temperature calculation, double click that blue box, then it'll calculate for all the data and boom. Now we have an HR diagram that looks a lot more like the ones that we've seen from actual um, textbooks. So here our main sequence is very, very apparent now. And we have a whole lot of giant stars as well. And still we don't see a whole lot of white dwarfs or red dwarfs. Okay. So let's see, just want to check one more time. Our red dwarf stars, if I plot both the nearest and the brightest stars. Red dwarf stars are somewhere in the 10 to the minus one to 10 to the minus four luminosity range. So that would be under this region. So we've got a few, but it's still not very much. All right, if you want to repeat this search process for your own constellation, then you have to have this constellation code. And if you just Google constellation code, then IAU designated constellations, the abbreviations here are listed and you want the IAU abbreviation for your constellation. So for example, ARIES is A-R-I. All right, I think that's everything that you need to know in order to create your very own constellation diagram with lots and lots of data in it. If you have any more questions, feel free to email me. And good luck. <laughs>